गौरव डज हिज बेट रवि आशुतोष जतिन एंड गौरव वर रियली एक्साइटेड दे वर स्पेंडिंग देयर समर वेकेशन एट अ जूनियर समर कैंप एंड हैड मैनेज्ड टू गेट अ टेंट ऑल टू देमसेल्व्स द कैंप साइट वाज सराउंडेड ऑन थ्री साइड्स बाय अ जंगल एंड ऑन द फोर्थ साइड बाय अ ह्यूज गशिंग रिवर डोंट वांट टू अराउंड द कैंप आफ्टर लाइट्स आर आउट द रिवर as well as the jungle can be very dangerous hmm the camp director had warned in his welcome speech after sundown water snakes and other nocturnal creatures roam the grounds and that is why this fence has been created all around the camp at night an electric current passes through the barbed wires it will give a shock to anyone who touches it and thus is our defense against intruders our story begins on the fourth day of the camp when everyone was nicely settled in it was a cloudy day with a nip in the air the boys had been divided into groups and were instructed to study the plant and animal life in that region The mornings and afternoons were devoted to exploration of the life forms of the jungle. My project will be the best, Gaurav heard Sumit saying. I will go out at night and click photographs of the nocturnal animals. Hmm. <laughs> Are you mad, Sumit? Don't you know that it can be dangerous? Gaurav asked. Why would it be dangerous? I shall stay on this side of the fence and click away. The animals will not be able to get to me. Sumit replied. By late afternoon the sky was overcast and before sundown the rain was falling in sheets. All the children were sent to their tents early as there was not much to do and they were also tired after the journey through the day. Inside their tent, Gaurav and Ravi sat playing a game of chess on Ravi's bed. Ashutosh was lying on his bed reading a collection of horror stories. Jatin occupied a stool playing country music on his guitar. When the bell rang to signal lights out, the children put their things away and turned off the lights. and before the round of good nights was over they were fast asleep a little after midnight gora woke up with a start he thought he had heard someone sobbing he strained his ears to listen more intently this time he heard a faint sound of someone calling out for help who could it be at this hour of the night he thought He quickly got out of his bed and peeped out of the tent. Oh, how cold it was! His feet were freezing, even though he was wearing woolen socks and warm slippers. Again, Gora felt he heard a sobbing sound coming, perhaps from a little to the right of their tent, which was the last on the side of the camp. Oh. What should I do? thought Gaurav. He didn't like the idea of going out alone at such an hour of night. So, he decided to wake up one of the boys and go along with him. Gaurav walked up to Jatin and gently shook him. "Jatin, Jatin, please wake up," he said. Jatin opened his eyes with a start. I think someone is either hurt or lost and is crying for help. Gora said desperately. Let us go and check. Are you mad? It is too dark and cold to go out, said Jatin. Besides, I am prone to catching cold and fever very easily. I can't come with you. Uh, why don't you take Ashutosh with you? With this, 
Jatin turned and went off to sleep again. Gaurav softly shook Ashutosh. Didn't you hear the director say it is not safe to roam around at night? I don't want to be bitten by a snake or eaten by a lion. I will not go and would also advise you to stay back, said Ashutosh sleepily. As a last resort, Gaurav woke up Ravi and asked for his help. Me? No way, was his answer. I am too scared of the dark. Oh, a shiver goes up my spine, just thinking that there might be snakes, frogs or scorpions out there in the dark. <sighs> With this, Ravi snuggled deep into his warm and cozy quilt. The words of his friends frightened Gora so much that he thought he too should get back into bed. He quickly took off his slippers and slid under the quilt. He was about to close his eyes when he heard the sobbing again. Oh, oh I can't be sleeping comfortably. Well, someone is out there in the dark, rainy night, crying for help, thought Gaurav. With this brave thought, he threw back the quilt again and slipped into his slippers. Taking out the torch from his knapsack, he did not hesitate from walking out into the rain. He was cautious and alert while heading towards the direction of the sound. Without caring about what could he be creeping and crawling on the grounds all around him, he kept walking, carefully shining his torch from left to right and back in alternate sweeps. The sound of sobbing seemed to get closer. As he swept the light of his torch right, a shiny black object caught Gora's attention. He walked up to it and picked it up. It was a camera. A possibility flashed in his mind and Gaurav quickly cupped his mouth with his free hand and screamed loudly. Sumit, is that you? Quick came the response from nearby. Yes, over here. I'm over here, <laughs> cried Sumit. I cannot walk. I think I've broken my ankle. <laughs> I'm also very cold and scared. Oh, please help me. Oh, please help me. Gaurav hummed on. Sumit, just keep talking to me and I will find you by the sound of your voice. Hmm? It is too dark and rainy for me to be able to see you. In no time, Gora found him. He helped Sumit stand up and held him secure by his waist. Sumit managed to hop on his good leg and they slowly made their way towards the camp, where a bright light glowed. As soon as they reached the tent, Gora called out, Doctor! Doctor! We need help. Dr. Verma came out of the dispensary tent at once. Sumit's ankle was immediately taken care of and both the boys were put to bed after they had changed into dry clothes and had gulped down nice warm cups of hot chocolate. Well, what do you think happened the next morning? Everyone was talking about how brave Gaurav had been the night before. The director praised him and said, Courage lies not in being fearless, but in being brave even when you are scared.